Do you ever wonder about the world we live in? Do you ever wonder about where you came from? Where are your ancestors from? What do they eat for dinner in China? These are all questions that could be answered by the five themes of geography. Our lesson objective today is to learn about the five themes of geography. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to give a brief description of each theme. This flowchart shows an overview of our five themes. We're going to be going into this flowchart in detail over the next couple of weeks. But for this lesson today, we're going to be talking about each theme that's in the yellow box, giving you an overview of location, place, human-environment interaction, movement, and regions. Get your notebooks out and jot down our vocabulary. Look for the definitions of these words as we go through the video. Location, place, human-environment interaction, movement, and region. The theme of location describes where places are on our planet Earth. There are two different ways we describe location. Absolute location is the exact location on Earth, and relative location is a location compared to other places. In the next slide, I'll explain this more clearly. Absolute location is the exact location on Earth where you can locate something. You can identify absolute location with longitude and lat latitude lines. You can say what hemisphere the location is in or even the exact address. So your house address is an absolute location because it tells us exactly where you are on what street and what house number. Relative location has to do with how one place is located in relation to another. So for example, if I said Harrisburg is to my east, well then I would have to be standing east of Harrisburg. So for example, if I'm in Pittsburgh, Harrisburg is to the east. But if I'm standing in Philadelphia, Harrisburg's relative location would be to the west. Another example is if I said, it's going to take you three miles to get to my house. Well, it depends on where you're starting from. If you live just down the road, it can only take a few feet to get to my house. Three miles would be further. So it's relative to where your starting point is. The theme of place defines a place's unique characteristics. There's two ways we describe this, physical characteristics and human characteristics. Let's take a closer look. If you want to describe a place using its physical characteristics, you would describe the mountains, rivers, lakes, and seas, the climate, or the vegetation. And vegetation means the plants or trees that grow there. So these are all the natural characteristics of a location. The human characteristics are man-made characteristics. So the language, unique buildings that are built there, the religions that are followed in a certain place, and traditions and holidays that are celebrated. So for example, the Mummers Parade. That's a human characteristic of the city of Philadelphia. They don't have a Mummers Parade in Pittsburgh. The other example on this screen is the Amish sign, Amish Crossing. You would see a sign like that in Lancaster. So that would be a human characteristic of the city of Lancaster. You wouldn't see an Amish sign like that in Pittsburgh because there are no horse and buggies in Pittsburgh. The final picture on the screen is a picture of Pittsburgh. The human characteristics in that picture below would be the bridge, the buildings, and the baseball stadium. So let's make sure we understand the difference between the location and place theme. Location is where you're located and the place is a description of that location. The next theme is human environment interactions. 
These are the interrelationships between people and their environment. And we'll go over three different types of relationships. Those relationships are how humans depend on the environment they live in, how they modify the environment that they live in, and how they change and adapt to the environment that they live in. The next few slides will give us an example of each of these ways that humans interact with the environment. This apple tree is an example of how we could be dependent on our environment by using the vegetation and the trees to supply us with food. Modifying the environment or changing our environment this example is a bridge being built over a river. We had to modify our human environment to work around that river. And finally, adapting to our environment is finding ways to live comfortably within the environment that we've chosen. So for example, if we live in a hot location, we would want central air conditioning or an air conditioning window unit to cool our homes to make the environment more comfortable. The same would be for indoor heating. In the winter, we turn our indoor heating on. It's a way that we adapt to live comfortably in our environment. Which of the following is an example of human environment interaction? Watching TV, playing the Xbox, or cutting down trees? If you said cutting down trees, you would be correct. That's humans changing their environment. The next theme is movement. How are we all connected? This theme involves people movement, how we move goods and items, and how we move ideas from one location to another. An example of people movement would be immigrants coming from one country to another. So in this example, it's immigrants coming through Ellis Island in New York. Moving goods or product from one location to another would be importing and exporting items from one country to another. And the movement of ideas an example of that is using the internet or Facebook to share ideas from one location to another. The final theme is regions. Regions are areas that have something in common. Areas that are grouped together by a set of things special to that region. Let's look at Pennsylvania. A few regions we have in Pennsylvania would be the cities, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh and Harrisburg are our biggest cities. Those are each considered regions. The coal region in Northeast Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania is part of the Northeastern states in the United States. So we are part of the Northeastern region of the United States. Which of the following is not a theme of geography? If you said people, you would be correct. That is not one of our five themes of geography. Let's review our objectives. If you cannot answer the question, what are the five themes of geography, you should go back and review this video. In the next few lessons, we will take a closer look at each of the themes and relate it to our lives in Pennsylvania and in the United States of America. Remember our five themes are location, place, human environment interaction, movement, and region.